Economic motive is at the center of American war making, empire, the surveillance state. Um, I think it's something like 75 to 80 percent of the surveillance budget goes to private corporations. So when you talk about surveillance spending, it doesn't go into the NSA, it goes to Booz Allen and Hamilton or um, all of the different uh, surveillance corporations around the world, um, especially in the United States. And if you look at even, there was a Bloomberg article from three days ago that talked about how uh, the stock prices of weapons manufacturers, what the US media calls defense companies, which are weapons manufacturers, um, are now at an all-time high, Raytheon, General Dynamics, um, and Boeing, um, by virtue of the US bombing campaign in Iraq and Syria, which is causing a major increase in the demand for drones and bombs. Things like the Israeli bombing of Gaza, the 50-day bombing of Gaza, which is increasing the market. The more the US government engages in militarism and aggression and violence, the better um, these defense companies do. The more surveillance they engage in, the more the surveillance industry makes. Um, they're all inextricably linked and always have been. Well, we've done a lot of reporting on spying that was clearly for economic purposes, whether spying on economic summits um, or on the Brazilian oil giant Petrobras. Um, there's documents I published in my book where the NSA and hackers within the NSA talk about the motive for spying being not just diplomatic and political power, but also economic advantage. Um, there has been reporting on uh, spying on the Brazilian Ministry of Mines and Energy by the Canadian um, surveillance ag agency that happens to be the agency in Brazil of greatest interest to the Canadian logging industry. So there's no question that economic advantage plays a major, major role in why the surveillance state has been constructed and how it's used. I'd say the story that ended up being um, ignored was the very first one that I ever did about the relationship with, between the NSA and Israel, um, which is that the NSA turns over enormous amounts of raw, unminimized communications data about American citizens to the Israeli surveillance agency. And in fact, the public editor of the New York Times criticized her own paper for not reporting the story that we published. You can't be an American citizen that cares about what your government is doing in the world without focusing on Israel. Because just as an economic matter, the United States gives $3 billion a year of taxpayer money every single year to the Israelis, on top of which they give enormous amounts of diplomatic and other forms of political protection. So everything that Israel does in terms of aggression toward its neighbors is centrally enabled by the United States. So the, my government is responsible for so much of what Israel does in the world. Um, but beyond that, uh, so much of why we are in the Middle East, why we're inextricably involved in the Middle East um, is about Israel, um, but also Israeli aggression towards the people of that region, which is seen quite rightly as American aggression toward the people in that region, um, plays a major role in why there's high levels of anti-American sentiment, why there's um, people who want to do violence to America, which in turn is used to justify um, the endless war there. And so our policy toward Israel is not the only factor, um, but it's one of the major, major factors in why the United States government um, is involved in that region in the destructive ways that it is. When we uh, created the idea of um, a new media organization, which was created in the first instance by myself, Jeremy Scahill, and Laura Poitras, um, diversity, racial, um, ethnic, gender, um, religious diversity was one of our principal goals. We wanted to be the most diverse media organization of its size. Um, when we uh, unveiled ourselves, um, there are a lot of different reasons why, but that was definitely and has been our biggest disappointment and our biggest failure. Um, we made a lot of strides in that regard um, because we're really focused on it, um, but I think the criticism is completely valid. Um, and uh, you know, I think that if you look at uh, where we are now in terms of the journalists and the editors and the other people who are working to produce our journalism, um, it's vastly more diverse than we were seven months ago. Um, and seven months from now, we'll be vastly more diverse still. And I do think that the commitment that we made early on to be the most diverse journalistic outlet for um, our size um, will be one that we will fulfill. There's almost no creature um, less intellectually honest than partisan Democrats. Um, the just unprincipled hackery never ceases to stun me, no matter how much I think I'm immune to it. Um, you know, I began writing about politics in 2005 during the Bush administration, and my entire platform and career was built by liberals. We were taught that, you know, Gandhi's political awakening happened when he was thrown out of this whites-only compartment in South Africa. On the train. On the train. And in fact, uh, Gandhi believed in racial segregation. <laughs>